Hey everybody, Matt here with Take Roads List Traveled, and today we are working on my 2006 Chevy Avalanche, doing a lot of work to the front end. We are changing out upper and lower ball joints on the uppers, just going to do the entire control arm with the ball joint already installed. It's a whole lot easier. Uh, like I said, lower ball joints, inner and outer tie rods, and then also going to be doing the sway bar links and the front hubs. So a lot of work getting done today. Um, just almost an entire front end rebuild uh, outside of like idler arm uh, and, and pitman arm. But uh, if you are looking for a specific thing, just kind of breeze through the video. Um, I'll try to put it down in the description as to where each thing is. But otherwise, we're just going to get right into it. Uh, already got the vehicle jacked up and on jack stands. Make sure you do the same thing. Chalk a rear wheel. Make sure she's nice and secure. And let's dive right in. With the front wheel off, if you're just doing your tie rod ends, then you can just go ahead and come in right here on my 2006. This is an 18 millimeter. I've also got a hex head at the bottom of the post if you need to use that with a wrench uh, in order to break that loose. Uh, then I just use an adjustable on the inner. Uh, that way I can break it loose that way uh, rather than doing it all in steps. I just get that out and then hit that. Uh, to pop this out, you can use a pickle fork. Uh, I recommend actually taking and just hitting your knuckle with a hammer and getting that to unseat. If you're doing your sway bar links, which is right here, you've got a through bolt that runs all the way through. On my 2006, it's a 14 millimeter to get those out. Since I'm gonna be doing the hubs and everything, I need to remove the brake caliper, the bracket, the rotor, everything. So I'm just gonna remove the caliper and the bracket as one unit by taking out this top 18 millimeter bolt here and then the corresponding one right down, uh, where's she at? Right down, if I can get my camera to focus right down there. Uh, not the Torx head, but just the, the six head or the, the, uh, the hex, the hex head. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. So we're gonna take that off, suspend that up out of the way, and then we can get the brake rotor off and go ahead and uh, get this, 36 mil axle nut out as well. We're also going to get this line, uh, the speed sensor line uh, out of this bracket. Remove this 10 millimeter bolt and this 10 millimeter bolt that hold the brake line in place, uh, just so we have that extra movement. We're also going to remove uh, this retention block from the upper control arm for the speed sensor. Brake caliper is off, uh, as well as the bracket. You can see I've got plenty of play in my line there with it being suspended. Uh, before I pull my rotor off, I'm gonna mark the stud and then also the rotor itself so that when I put it back on, I can make sure it goes back on in the exact same orientation. Uh, this is just for any particular wear patterns or anything like that that the rotor and the pads may have. With the rotor off, I can now focus on changing out uh, my hub. So this is a 35 millimeter socket or nut on uh, my 2006. And then I also have three, uh, three nuts on the back of the hub. One here, one at the top, all the way up here. And then one on the other side at the bottom corresponding to that one. Uh, I believe those are a 15 millimeter, uh, but I'll let you guys know if I'm wrong on that. So let's get these all off and get this hub assembly out. Now that we have everything loose for the hub bolts, which these back three are 15 millimeter, we need to disconnect our sensor from up top. It just has a little clip that you raise up and then comes undone. And then the plug, you have to kind of pry out from the upper shock mount. Get it out, that'd be great. But you can see right in there, it needs to come out. And then this whole assembly will come out. Now mine's in there a little bit, so I'm just gonna take a soft blow hammer and hit on it. Uh, I don't wanna do uh, a big sledge right now, just because I don't wanna mar this up. Even though I'm replacing this, I don't wanna mar it up. But uh, if you, 
if you're not replacing your hubs when you're doing your ball joints, you really don't want to mar any of this up. So a soft blow goes a long way for you uh, to be able to get in and hit on the back side of it, rotate it around and get that to free up. Uh, penetrating oil is great. Use it, get it down in there. And then once we have this out, we'll hit our next step, which is getting these ball joints undone. Now that the hub is out, I can focus on getting my tie rod in and my ball joint separated from the knuckle assembly so I can pull that whole thing out. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use an 18 millimeter on my outer tie rod end, my upper ball joint, and then a 24 millimeter on my nut down here. Now, yours might have castle nuts with cotter pins. If that's the case, uh, just use a, a pair of like snip pliers to work that cotter pin out and then take the castle nut off. Um, hopefully you don't need a, uh, a pickle fork or anything for these. Usually uh, a, a, like a three pound sledge hitting the ends will free them up and you can get them right out. So let's uh, hopefully get these unseated here pretty quickly. With the knuckle off, now I can focus on getting this upper control arm out. Now what I've done is my camber adjustment on the front and rear, I've marked where they are related to the mount on both ends of this because I'm gonna be reusing these. And I wanna make sure that these get put back into that same spot. Uh, I'm gonna to have to take the truck for an alignment, but this just at least lets me get really close so that when I go to the shop, it's already really close, they can check it. And if there is any adjustment needed, it's really minor. So uh, this is, I believe a uh, 21 millimeter. Uh, let me double check that. Yeah, so that's a 21 millimeter. Uh, so we're gonna get those bolts out, pull that upper control arm out, and just save ourselves a lot of headache versus trying to change out that ball joint all by itself. Got the new upper control arm in. Uh, the old one just literally pulls out. So you're just gonna take the nut off on the outside of each of these camber bolts, then take a hammer, just tap that bolt out, whole thing slides out, put it in and realign your plates. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this inner tie rod out. Just do the whole assembly. So I'm just gonna use a big crescent and I'm gonna come up and put it right on this fitting here. Now I loosened mine up already and the way that I did it, uh, so same, same process, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Uh, is I ended up putting my foot up against this and just press with my leg to break it loose. And then you can see the whole thing just kind of spins. So makes it real easy from here on forward. So we'll finish getting that out and get the new tie rod set up. With the tie rod assembly out, both your inner and your outer, uh, you're going to want to make some measurements so that you can try to be as close to your alignment as possible. So I this is just a little off, so I'm gonna try and straighten that up a little bit. She's not wanting to sit. So, a um, couple spots you want to measure out is at the end of this large inner tie rod nut. You don't wanna measure at the end of the threads, you wanna measure at the end of the nut. You wanna measure where the jam nut ends and the tie rod sleeve comes on and then the very end of the tie rod. You might want to note those measurements. So now granted, I just put a mark. That doesn't mean I've measured it. I actually want to take and measure things out. So I'm looking at 10 inches and three, nope. 10 and one eighth jam nut. So I'm going to put 10 and 1 8 to the end of the jam nut and then to the end of the tie rod I'm at 16 inches. And what that does is that allows me to retain as much of my alignment as possible so that just driving it to the shop I'm not putting a lot of wear and tear on my tires or anything like that. So you'll do this and then you'll reassemble everything and tighten everything down to fit these measurements. Um, one option you have is to upgrade your tie rod. 
Uh, so what I'm doing is I am going to be putting this longer shaft onto the inner tie rod. Uh, I tend to take my avalanche up to the mountains quite a bit, and this is a weak point on these GM trucks. These will snap. And what this does is this sleeve will sit right here and just gives that some extra strength all along that long shaft uh, and helps eliminate that weak point. Um, but otherwise, you're gonna do the exact same process that you've got going on here and uh, get these measured out so that we can put them back in and try to retain as much alignment as possible. All right, I went ahead and removed my sway bar links on both sides so I could get my sway bar up out of the way a little bit, just using a zip tie to retain it to the new upper control arm. And I got the new inner and outer tie rod assembly all put in. Now it's time to do this lower ball joint. Now, there's a couple different designs on these. Some guys say you need to remove this CV shaft. Uh, you don't really need to. You can kind of secure it out of the way with a bungee cord or whatever. But there's two different designs. So mine has these four little uh, uh, retainers that are hit down in there that are going to prevent the ball joint from coming out. I need to break those off. Yours might have a snap ring that you have to remove. Uh, my new ones use a snap ring, which I'm really happy about. Uh, but on this one, I'm going to have to break those um, break those retainer tabs off, the four of them right there. One, two, three, and four. I've got to break those away so I can get this pressed out uh, just using a cold chisel. So a lot of fun. Yay. But, you know, it is what it is. And yay for GM changing away from the Bolton style ball joints, which I wish they still used. So get onto that and then we can start putting... Uh, everything really back together again once I get that pressed out. So I got the lower out. Um, let me show you this. So on these factory ones, you, you can see right there, it's got that little tab, that retainer tab that gets folded out. Uh, and then you gotta drive it in. But I just used a cold chisel. And then I just put a jack stand underneath the arm so it wouldn't go down at all. And I just took a hammer and hit it out uh, just from the top. Just be careful not to hit the control arm. You don't wanna mess anything up. So we'll take a wire brush, clean this up a little bit. Uh, not anything crazy, just enough to take any surface off of there and then uh, the, any surface rust. And then we'll get the new one pressed in and start putting everything actually back together again. The new ball joint is in and you can tell that this is a snap ring retainer style. Uh, you just need to use the uh, ball joint press kit, which is one of these deals right here. Use the appropriate sections of it to be able to get that pressed all the way into where that snap ring can sit in there. Uh, make sure to seat your boot beforehand uh, and then your sway bar linkage. Uh, make sure to set that up properly uh, so that you've got all of your uh, different uh, metal retainers and everything where they need to be uh, making contact with your metal points so that all that good stuff goes. And I just realized that's actually backwards. I need to swap that around. So let's pull this back out. Oh, that's gonna drop. Let's see if I can get you guys set up here in a way that you might be able to see what I'm doing here. Maybe good old tripods and cameras and using your phone for all this kind of mess. Let's see here. There, I think. I think that'll work. All right, so you have your bolt, you have your bolt with one of your metal pieces, and then one of your rubber stoppers, or bushings, I should say stopper. Bushing, and then you're gonna do another bushing with your inset going up, your metal cap. That's gonna go like that. You have your sheath. Another metal cap, another bushing, this time going the opposite direction so that that little piece can rest down into the control arm. And then on the underside, you'll just copy your top. Uh, but I'm gonna wait till I get my knuckle put on here to get all that set up. So there's your sway bar linkage. So all done and done properly for you guys so you can see it. All right, time to get this knuckle put back on and 
this is where life gets a little more fun. So it's interesting. My new these are all, this is all Mevotech parts. Uh, and the interesting thing is that the uh, oh forgot I had that zip tied up there. Oh, I need to loosen those up a little bit. They're a little too tight. Uh, move this control on as freely as I need to right now. There we go. A lot of movement. So. All right, so the interesting one is my uh, uh, my tie rod end uses a castle nut, but neither of my ball joints do, which makes, that's a little interesting there. Ugh. Don't worry, that jack stand is not supporting anything. Okay. Go ahead and start cleaning all of this. Put back on. Bottom retainer on there. Oh, all right. Now I need to get this whole thing up high enough to be able to get my upper put on. I've got to jack this up. So I got to move the camera. So be back in a flash. With everything back on, it's time to torque things down. Uh, your tie rod end nut gets torqued to 37 foot pounds if it's a 2006. Uh, there's actually a few different ones for that. Uh, if you have a 2002 Avalanche, that's 33 foot-pounds. Uh, if it's 2003 to 2004, it's 48. And then it's 2005 uh, and later, it's 37 for the 1500 models. For a 2500 model, then it is uh, 48 foot-pounds across the board on the Avalanches. Um, for your um, stabilizer bar, or not the, uh, or uh any sway bar whatever that is whatever that's called stabilizer bar yeah stabilizer bar uh this bottom nut gets tightened down to 89 inch pounds this one right down here it's 89 inch pounds on that uh for your upper ball joint uh you are going to go to 37 foot pounds and this lower one is 74 foot pounds um, and then for the, uh, the hub bolts, the three hub bolts on here, uh, those are going to go to, uh, 133 foot pounds. That's a lot on those. I didn't think it was going to be quite that much, but it, it is. So it's quite a bit. Um, as far as your axle nut on the end here, uh, the axle nut right there on the end that is i'm gonna have to look that one up uh, i'm not sure what that one is let me see here um ooh, wait actually i think that's gonna be right back here i'm looking through my my spec book to make sure i have everything for you guys here we go uh let's see uh the drive axle hub nut yep so that axle that axle nut Oh boy, that is 177 foot pounds. So uh, that is a lot. So uh, you're gonna be doing some beast mode on some of these, but make sure you torque everything down to spec. Uh, otherwise, you can have you can have a real issue there. Um, as far as your upper control arm nuts, the ones right up here uh, and back here uh, that have those uh, those camber plates on there. Um, with that, it's uh, those are supposed to get torqued to let's see, those are your pivot bolts, so those need to get torqued to 140 foot pounds. 
Uh, my thing on that is I tend to do about 100 foot pounds on those because I'm gonna be taking it for an alignment and I'm just going right up the road. Now, if you've got a longer drive to an alignment shop, 100% torque those down. But um, otherwise, leave them just a little bit loose, like 100 foot pounds, 110 foot pounds. Uh, just makes life a lot easier for the, the folks that are doing your alignment to get those loose and, and take care of that for you. But, you know, always good stuff there. So anyway, time to torque it all down and then get, uh, get the brakes put back on and go from there. With everything torqued down, you can put your brake caliper back on, uh, including the bracket. Those two 18 millimeter bolts that hold the bracket and caliper on in place get torqued to 133 foot pounds. You can see how I've got this pry bar set up uh, to be able to tighten that axle nut down to 177 foot pounds. Once I get everything else, uh, especially those back uh, caliper bolts torqued down, I'll be able to get the wheel put on and tighten those lug nuts down to 140 foot pounds and that'll be it so i hope this helps you guys out and always remember takes road take the road less traveled and until next time have a good one